Welcome back to The Broncast, a podcast all about the Ford Bronco. I'm your host, John Melton. I'm Donnie Whiteman. I'm Jimmy Golden. We're here at Jimmy Golden's amazing property for a very special Bronco episode. So uh, here we are, uh, Jimmy, thank you so much for having us at no your problem. property. Thanks for letting us come and uh, come check out all these amazing Broncos, man. This, this place is incredible. How many Broncos about do you have? Uh, 20, 21, somewhere along in there. That is Something amazing. like that. 21 Broncos. Yeah, what we wanted to do is we thought, what better place to come to talk about rare Broncos. Like what makes a rare Bronco? Uh, is your Bronco rare? Do you know what you have? Yeah. You yeah. know, so this I'm, is ideal. I, I see it online all the time. Like people are, you know, rare, you know, blah, 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 Bronco, one of, you know, whatever. And I'm like, ah, is that really rare? Right. Or, you know, did you get a Marty report and saw, oh, they only made one that was like this. Um, and you're like, oh yes, this is so rare. Well, it's a Bronco, it's cool, but it might not be as rare as you think. Right. I thought I thought it would be really cool is if we could uh, pick out a few here. There's 23, we can't cover them yeah. all, but let's pick <laughs> our like three favorites. And uh, we'll let Jimmy pick one out too. I'm sure he has a favorite. Yeah, yeah. Where are, yep. we, where are we at? Well, actually, um, this is Jimmy's super secret Bronco uh, collection. So we're um, we're in the middle of the United States. You are directly in but somewhere in between Corinth, Mississippi, and Rome, Georgia. He's going to tell you. You're going to be able to just <laughs> it's exactly show where up. we somewhere are. Somewhere yeah. in between. Somewhere in there. <laughs> like that's. I mean, that narrows it down exactly. Yep. Okay. Well, let's start. Let's start with this one. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. I mean, okay. So what do we what do we have here? So this is a '66 U13 Roadster. Uh, this is second month production, built in September. So it's the second month they built the Bronco. Um, this is one of 4,090 made for the 66 Roadster. This one actually still has the original inserts in it. It has the fender mount mirror, the square cut bumpers, the eyebrow grill. The 66 features that you hear a lot about, um, and we've tried to retain those on this one. Now, we've we talked about bud trucks with you on the podcast is this a bud truck this is what we call a bud truck this does have all those early bud truck features that everyone discusses on the forums and whatnot uh it has the eyebrow grill it has the uh you know the short fender apron things of that nature that get brought up bud truck talk i like that it has the silver seats i yes. always love the silver seats the silver dash things they only did yes I love the silver seats myself. Um, that's one of those rare 66 oddities. Uh, that's the only year you could have silver seats. Now, are these the Mustang seats? They are technically two Mustang driver side seats is what they technically are. And the reason they did that is they both have to fold that way. That one has to fold that way to fold in the floorboard. Oh, that's why it flips. I always yep. thought they were supposed to flip like that, and it's like, but they both sort of go yes. to the right. They, so technically, it's two Mustang driver seat frames. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Is what it is. But uh, this one actually has the 66 hubcaps on there as well, and uh, those, are, those are very hard to find. So I'm very fortunate this one had them on it. So uh, for our listeners, a Bud truck is a truck that was made prior to Ford's assembly line. Is that correct? It was prior to Ford actually building all their own bodies, yes. They still had somewhat of an assembly line, but it was prior to Ford building all their own panels. And I think the Bud Company, they actually built like stainless steel train bodies and all kinds of stuff, but they were in Detroit, right? They were in Detroit or the vicinity of Detroit, somewhere yeah. nearby. I do know they weren't far from the assembly plant of Ford's. So we're talking about what is rare. We're talking about, you know, how to kind of identify. So someone gets a 66. Is every 66 rare? Not necessarily. Um, you know, we talk about the Bud trucks being, you know, unusual, and they are. That was only a one-year thing. But not every 66 is necessarily rare. 
Um, they made U15s that were the majority of your 66s. Then we have the half cabs. They were a little more rare. Then the Roadster is the most rare 66 um, of the models that Ford produced. And are the Bud trucks just Roadster? They're not. They actually made all three during that time period. Um, okay. As a matter of fact, a very high number of your 66s were made during that time period. It seemed as if Ford ramped up production real high and then kind of tapered off slowly towards the end of the model year is what it seems like. Interesting. Like, so what, what are some of the things, like if someone's buying a, a Bronco, they see a 1966, what are some of the things that when they come up to it, they should look for to see if it's rare? Like we talked about the eyebrow grill up right. front. That would be Bud Truck. Mm -hmm. What else? What are, what are some of the other things that... Well, uh, as far as like a, like a Roadster, talk about like a Roadster if you want to see if it is. There'll be screw holes on your striker post, on your door post, and holes where the backing plate screwed in. So you'll see, hey, this had door inserts on it at one time. Yeah, this is, a, this is the example of the door insert here. Yes, yeah. that's the original fiberglass door insert there. And that so would be one thing. With the fiberglass door insert, you can't close the door, obviously. Right. There's no, there's no um, room for an actual door. And Roadsters, did not come with a hard top or a top at all, right? Not a not a hard top. It okay. was a dealer option to get a company called Whitco produce soft tops and soft doors that Ford carried in their line to install at dealerships. And this one actually did have one of those originally. Interesting. And you were talking about you know with the um, bulkhead. Did the bulkhead only come with the Roadster, only come with the half cab? No, actually, that's that's one thing that's uh, pretty commonly not known is that the bulkhead was actually available on all three models, the U13, U14, oh. and U15, up until 73. When they discontinued the half cab, they discontinued the bulkhead also. Wow. But um, this is a U13 that originally came with the bulkhead. Interesting. So, yeah, so just because it has a bulkhead doesn't mean half cab. Right. Commonly, when your Bronco wasn't ordered with a rear seat back in these days, you had a bulkhead. Gotcha. Just to kind of divide for a cargo area. Okay. So what other rare things would you want to look for? I mean, obviously, to tell if it's a U13, U14, U15, you're looking at the VIN number. So right. that's the first thing you're looking that's at. That's number one. Yep. And then what are some other just body cues? Um, that we we want to we would want to have for a rare Bronco. So, <clears throat> like on this one, for example, um, if you if you say you had one laying out here and it's been all taken apart, right? You got a Bronco that's been all taken apart. An early '66 Bronco emblem only had four prongs. The later Bronco emblem had five. So if you see one that's missing this prong right here at the bottom corner of the B. It's an early 66. Interesting. Then you know it's early. Okay. Um, here's another thing. This fender mount mirror, these are pretty rare. Uh, if you see the four holes in the fender here, then it had this mirror. That's pretty rare. Wow. This is commonly called the Roadster mirror, but they were used on half cabs and wagons at times. Okay. Um, the uh, hoods are different on a 66, an early 66. The hoods are different also. They have some different bracing underneath. Things like that are rare. Okay. You don't you don't see that a lot. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I always wonder. Like when I see a '66, is it's like, okay, how rare? How rare is it? Right. But definitely, Bud Truck would be eyebrow grill. Mm -hmm. um, four prong emblem. Four prong emblem. Fender. Yeah, the short inner fender apron. Yep. Or actually, that's the kick panel. But yeah, inner short kick panel. Yep. Um, and then if it's a Roadster, yep, uh, that's rare on the 66. Absolutely. Well, let's move on. Let's, let's look at some of the other, or do you have any questions? Yeah, no, actually, I think the next truck I'd really like to see is um, like government issue or municipal trucks. I know that uh, there weren't a lot of them sold to the government, but w you have a couple of those. So can we look at those? Absolutely. Let's look at them. All right, Jimmy. So what do we, what do we have here? So this is my 67 military Bronco. Uh, this was purchased by the United States government from Ford and was used in military services. These were commonly used like on military bases, just kind of a go-getter vehicle. 
Uh, but this one, this is one of those. They made a limited run of them in 67. And uh, this one's actually pretty complete. You can see the headlight guards there in front. And the yeah, these, these are really cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You never see those. That's right. Those are very, very hard to come by. <laughs> and uh, the fender mount mirrors, those were commonly used on these military trucks also. And what year? The 67, 67, okay. yes. 67 was the contract year that you see military Broncos, but there might have been a one-off here and there where say a military base ordered one from Ford just to have a go-getter. But this was the contract year that they built, you know, built them in a actual ordered run. Now, how can you tell if it's a government issue or not? Because a lot of these trucks have been converted, and they look right. just like all the other Broncos. You know, they've taken all the government issue things off of it. But is there a identification on it somewhere? There is. Um, so the number one thing you're going to look for is if you still have your warranty plate, and on 67, that's going to be on the driver's side kick panel near the e-brake. If you still have that, you'll look for uh, an 83 DSO code on the bottom right-hand corner. And that will mean that it was sold to the government. That's a government order DSO code. 83. 83. That's your government code. Also, there's a tag on the dash that goes missing often, but I'm lucky enough this one still has it. There's a tag on the dash that says U.S. property right on the bottom. It has like a nomenclature number and, you know, it has the VIN number on it. Can we see that? Absolutely. So where are we looking? So right on the center of the dash here is this plate <clears throat> that had four screws holding it on. And all these military Broncos, except one or two that I've ever seen, were radio delete. So you can see this tag here in place. So it says U <clears throat> U.S. property right on the bottom of it. Hey, John, I think one of my favorite things about this truck are these straps in the roof on the back. And uh, what's really neat about this is that these are actually uh, like a canvas olive green webbing. So, Jimmy, you said these are actually for... Those are grab handles. <laughs> Basically, if you had a passenger in the back, they had something to hold on to. If you're riding, you know, riding around the base or wherever they may be. Um, that was something for a passenger to grab onto back here that the military added at some point. I noticed this is different too. Right here, we've got some holes that are uh, sort of bead rolled right in the corners that I haven't mm -hmm. seen on a roof before. Yes, those are uh, those are found on 66 and 67 roofs. And I have no idea why they stopped doing that, but they did. They stopped doing that sometime during the 68 model year. And uh, so you'll only see that oblong hole there on 66 and 7 roofs. The, uh, the whole inside of the stuff is still green. And then there's, yeah. what's the sticker over the passenger on the roof there? That is a civil defense decal that uh, states that this vehicle is on loan for civil defense use. And I'm guessing, see, this Bronco was actually owned by a rescue squad at one time also. And I'm guessing it was on there for their purposes. But uh, I haven't found any history on that part of it yet. Now, does this, I mean, is this running and driving? Are you... Uh, it needs some brake work, but yes, I used to drive it. I haven't driven it in a while, but yes, it was a running driving Bronco. It could be easily again. So, um, DSO stands for what? District Sales Office. Okay, like the regional places they shipped yes. all the trucks to? Yes, okay. say, say you lived in, for example, say you lived in Daytona Beach, Florida. Your nearest district sales office was Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So, if you bought a brand new Bronco and you lived there, it, it would have had a Jacksonville DSO. Whereas you guys... It was Memphis, wasn't it? It would have been Memphis yeah. or Louisville. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other DSO tagged vehicles? Yeah, the one right in front of us here actually is another 83 government DSO Bronco. Oh, code 83 or number 83? Yes, 83. Right. Cool, let's go check that out. All right. I've, I've actually seen this truck before. Mm -hmm. I have a little like Hot Wheels of it. Yep. So, which is really neat. I don't know how that happened, but how did you uh, get this one? So it's funny, this Bronco popped up on Gov Deals. It's a government auction site. Back in 2014, I think it was, but I was fresh out of college into a new job. I had no money. I couldn't buy it. And a couple years ago, a friend of mine was riding through South Texas and seen it sitting on the side of the highway. He sent me pictures of it, you know, in like a business card. And I'm like, man, I can't believe you found this. I wanted this thing so bad. And, uh, Come to find out the VIN number on this one is 
from the white one we were just looking at. So they were built 14 units apart. But uh, anyway, deal worked out, it's here now. Uh, so had it shipped from South Texas and this is another military Bronco that was later owned by obviously Glen Alpine Police and it was uh, also owned by another police department at one time. So there, there's uh, something on the back bumper that's kind of a dead giveaway on these vehicles, <clears throat> isn't there? Yes, so the military Broncos had their own specific bumper. This is 100% a factory bumper here. My white one has it also. That is called a shore power connection there on the left-hand side. It's where military grade equipment could be plugged in, similar to what we'd have like a trailer plug on your truck. Yeah. That was the military grade example of that. And then this, oddly enough, channel bump, piece of channel bumper was the military Bronco bumper. And these four holes are commonly there for a panel hitch. And it's unusual stuff, but this is what it came with. And you drive this one. Yeah, I do drive this one from time to time. Oh yeah, that's cool. So if there are um, other vehicles that could be rare because maybe they were celebrity owned or something like that, what you have something like that, don't you? Yeah, we do. We have something that Where, was on, Where's that? Right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 68 U13 Roadster. It's one of 212 made, but it is also a TV show vehicle. The television show Green Acres used three early Broncos during production. They used a 66 Roadster, a 67 Roadster, and a 68 Roadster. This happens to be the 68. Wow, that's cool. You got pictures of it yep. right here. That is amazing. Now, it's red in these pictures, was it? Painted maroon? It was painted maroon sometime later in its life. Uh, it went through some changes after the show, and uh, so it lost a few of its signature marks along the way, but it they left enough so you could figure it out. Now, I mean, how do you even t figure that out? How, like, you know, Broncos are in TV shows all the time. How do you, how do you find that? So, in this example, it was a little easier because it was already rare. You know, it was already one of 212 made. So then I started looking at those pictures saying, okay, so it has an antenna on it. So it came with a radio. So it's not a radio delete. It had chrome bumpers. So it didn't have painted bumpers. So you start narrowing those down. And then when I went to look at this for the very first time, we were just talking about DSOs. It had a Los Angeles DSO. Ah. So I'm like, okay, it came from California. It had inserts just like that. It had the holes in the posts like I was talking about earlier. It had, and you can tell where they filled the holes for that fender mount mirror. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, start adding up all the options. And then, Marty Report. Yep. Got the Marty Report, I went with the Elite, and it's one of one with all the same options that had chrome bumpers. Wow. So it's the only one ever made like the one on the show. <laughs> that's awesome. So. That, is, that is really neat. I mean, it's like, I think that's the fun part about talking about this stuff is when you can kind of decipher it down and find you know what yep. those unique things are and we talked about that at the beginning like the marty report is a great way to tell what options yes. were out there what you know what these had but that doesn't necessarily mean it's quote unquote rare right. just because it was the only one with those options but in this case it helped me yes, big time big time but see and Along through this process, I became friends with the owner of the 67 from the show. Oh, wow. And his Marty report is identical. Wow. They both went to the Los Angeles assembly plant when they were new. Uh, after they were built in Michigan, they were shipped to LA and then went to the studio. So both of our Martys look the same. Man, that's so cool. Well, it's so cool, like just the history that you can find. And we talked about uh, in a couple episodes ago, just all kinds of information that is out there on the internet. Right. Not all of it is correct. And so it's important to, you know, kind of pull all the information that you can. And if you missed that episode, definitely check that one out. Jimmy comes on and just talks about uh, how to kind of decode the VIN and, and some rare stuff there. But this is definitely a cool piece of history. Um, and I love that you guys have it amongst the other 20. I love here. it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, definitely cool. Okay, so we've looked at a unique, very unique 66, some DSO 83 67s. The, the 68 that was on a TV show. What is your favorite Bronco here? My favorite Bronco here is the one I grew up in. I'll get, my dad traded for it. He traded another Bronco for it when I was about four months old, and it's been here since. Well, let's take a look at that. All right. So this is my 76 Explorer package Bronco. Um, it's been converted to a half cab. Obviously, it wasn't originally a half cab. but So this one... When I was a baby, dad traded another Bronco for this one. And then four days after my 16th birthday, we worked out a situation where this became mine. So it's been mine since, and it's not going anywhere. This is my prized possession. That's awesome. That's super cool. Didn't you say this was uh, uh, on a birthday cake? It was. So when I was uh, three or four years old, this Bronco was on my birthday cake. I was Bronco <laughs> crazy when I was a kid, too. And, uh, well, I mean, your dad obviously started all of this. He like, did. And, and what, when did he buy his first Bronco? He bought his first in, I want to say, April or May of 1978. And it wasn't this one, right? It wasn't this one. Okay. He bought a uh, 69 Sport, and I've actually found that very Bronco. Wow. And so, yeah, I mean, it, uh, like that's the cool thing about all this is the, the Bronco fever just gets passed <laughs> down, you know? Like, yep. my kids always, you know, see a Bronco driving around, Bronco! You know, it's like, it's a, more than a punch bug, it's, it's the Bronco. My little girl said Bronco for the first time the other day, and I was thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to keep her, that's good. Yep. Yeah. So what have you done to this, or what is this, what's this been through in the years? So this was dad's primary hunting vehicle, and uh, so this, we, he has a hunting cabin, so this was driven to the cabin. It's had, I don't know how many deer in it, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, and he preferred the half cab because he could carry his generator and gas and, you know, all those things you don't want inside of a full cab. Uh, he carried all that with his half cab. And then, you know, as time rocked on, it got to where it needed painted and things like that. But when it got painted, I was like, that can't go back to the woods. There's, I, uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> So I begged and begged and begged. And finally we traded. I had another one at the time that we had worked on together and I traded him for this one. Wow. But that was what it was. It was a hunting truck, and then I got it in high school and drove it some, and I actually drove it from here to Townsend, Tennessee one year. and <laughs> uh, to, to Supercell? I sure did. Yeah. So with all these Broncos, how do you decide which one you're going to take to Supercell? It's almost to the point of rolling the dice, but uh, <laughs> kind of if a new one comes along, I kind of want to bring the new one, you know, if, like if I buy another one, if Dad buys another one, you would kind of want to bring the new one. And then, um, then there'll be one that I just kind of like having there. Yeah. Just kind of bring it to. I usually try to bring two. Yeah. What I like about this though is, you know, we've been talking about a rare Bronco. You know, what makes a rare Bronco? But in reality, what makes it rare is what makes it special. You know, yeah. it's like this amongst all the rare ones that we just saw. This is Jimmy's favorite because this is the most special. And I mean, I've. I have toyed with selling my 75 a number of times, but it's like, no, like that's my, you know, that's my baby. I had, I was telling you, I had a 19, I think it was just like that one. I think it was a 68. Um, what color is that? That is peacock blue. Peacock blue. Um, I can't remember though, because I can't find any of the details about it. Um, but yeah, it was like, that was my first one, but I don't, I, I'm not having that one I'm fine with, but it's the green one you know, that I'm like, that's special to me. Well, when I think of you, I think of that green one. Yeah. So that's your signature. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, yeah, when you're looking at buying a Bronco, it's like, it might be special to someone else. Right. <laughs> and that's why the price is where it is. It may not be rare, but it might be special to someone else. Right.
we're over here by another one of your trucks, a Mojave Tan Bronco with a Wimbledon white half cab roof. But I wanted to ask you about a really crazy option I heard about. Not seen it, but it's like a PTO. Mm -hmm. How did that work and what could you operate with a PTO on a Bronco? So your PTO worked, you had a little extra gearbox that you bolted on the side of your transfer case and then you put a second shifter in the floor to operate your PTO to engage it, right? But it would run a drive shaft to the front bumper. You could use a winch or you could operate a PTO, uh, PTO snowplow with it. I heard you could do a pulse hole digger too. Yes, you could. Now those were a little different. Now I haven't dug into those as much because those are a little crazy looking, but yes, there were some post hole diggers out there. I've seen advertisements for them. Yeah. So those are a little bit, I'd have to, I'd have to look into those to understand that a little more. <laughs> well, that's crazy. I mean, man, Jimmy, thank you. Oh, no problem. You and your family for letting us come and just you know, drool over all these Broncos and all the parts just everywhere. I mean, we've just scratched the surface and however many we have in here and then all the other ones out on the property um, is amazing and uh, super cool. And if you want to know what Jimmy's bringing to Supercell, you're just going to have to show up. April, uh, sometime in April, Townsend, Tennessee, Super Celebration. Pretty cool. There's some super cool Broncos that show up. That, Absolutely. To, to that event. It's uh, it's the cool one for sure. If you're coming to see some unique and rare early Broncos, that's that's the one to go to for sure. But yep. yeah, thank you for, for letting us come out. and um, Thank you guys. It's been fun. Yeah. It, it's a beautiful place out here. There's a little slice of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> We'd stay all day. Yeah. <laughs> you have to run us off. Oh, you're welcome to stay. And we even get, keep getting gunshots while we're here. It's like it just, it's the it's the people who are trying to come and see the Broncos who aren't invited. If you hear the gunshots during this podcast, that's what that is. Welcome to Alabama, folks. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. All right. Then great.